Another motivation for the need for reform and the desire for change is a critical part of the liberal doctrine, which is guilt. Few even realize this guilt is a very new phenomenon in history, which few felt before the 20th century and no one before the late 18th century. The sequence of guilt goes as follows. I feel guilty, and I do not know why. There are people in poverty, hungry, and in bad situations. I attach my guilt to your unhappiness and dire situation, trying to explain my guilt to myself to give it some sort of motivating structure. I must alleviate my guilt by siding with those less fortunate than myself. This guilt creates the obligation to do something to fix the social problems in the world. It does not matter to the liberal their knowledge or expertise on certain topics or lack thereof. They are not required to understand the causes of the social problems. All he knows is that something needs to be done about them. The group calling itself Occupy Sacramento, angry they say, over what they call corporate greed. Clearly angry at us too, the media. We were just out for an answer to a simple question. The focus of my story tonight is why are they here? So why are you here? I'm here to support people. People, of course. So tell me why you are here tonight. I'm here to support the people. Once the chaos died down, we kept asking the simple question, why are you here? What's your message? This is what the organizer of this entire event told us. Well, right now it's kind of vague. Anthony Bondi says Occupy Sacramento has what he calls a message team, working on the answer to why they're here. So you guys are in the process of forming the reasons why you're here exactly correct. This guilt is so deeply installed within liberalism suggests that all those who are prosperous are morally inferior to those who they deem less fortunate than himself. He can alleviate his own guilt and provide himself a feeling of accomplishment simply by being a champion of this new bill that will give the government more power to fix the issue. This type of increased legislation does not solve the problem and very well may increase the problem, but it doesn't matter because pushing for this type of legislation makes the liberal feel like he's doing something to help and acts as a soothing balm to his liberal guilt. One of the side effects of this optimistic view of human nature is that everyone in a dire circumstance is a victim, regardless of what happened previously in their life or the decisions that they made. Because their current state is poor, they are a victim and the liberal feels this guilt for them because they are a victim of poor institutions of the past. Once you subscribe, once you've been indoctrinated into this mindset, there is no other choice. Remember I said it was inevitable. Once you belong to this cult of indiscriminateness, there is no other conclusion you can come to than that good is evil and that evil is the victim of good. Because in a world where you are indiscriminate, where no behavior is to be deemed better or worse than any other, then your expectation is that all behavior should lead to equally good outcomes. When in the real world, different behaviors lead to different outcomes, you and I know why because we think. But to the modern liberal who cannot make that judgment, must not make that judgment, that would be discriminating. They have no explanation. So therefore, the only explanation for success has to be that somehow success has cheated. Success simply by its existence is proof positive to the modern liberal of some kind of chicanery and likely bigotry. Failure simply by its existence, no other evidence needed, just the fact that it has failed is enough proof to them that that failure has been victimized. So the mindless foot soldier, which is what I call the, the non-elite, will support the elite's blueprint for utopia, will side with evil over good, wrong over right, and the behaviors that lead to failure over those that lead to success, and have a sense of justice. No matter his knowledge of the problem, he will insist on and support far-reaching reforms because he only knows that there are people that are hungry, poor, and diseased. He does not need to provide them direct aid himself, but only support the government doing it for him with his vote, with his support. And by doing this, he alleviates his own guilt and feels a sense of accomplishment without any personal or direct sacrifice. The liberal creed does not require me to lead or go into the impoverished areas and provide aid myself, but only to support the government doing it in my stead. The liberal creed does not require putting your money where your mouth is because that would be too difficult. That would be too demanding. It's why the liberal who complains of the poverty in black urban communities does not have to go in and help them or volunteer, but simply support increasing the welfare state. It's why people like Al Gore and Leonardo DiCaprio can fly on private jets around the world while lecturing the rest about consumption of fossil fuels. It is why a white college student can go to protests and scream about injustices in poor black communities and white privilege, but still attend a school that costs 25 grand a year and drive her daddy's BMW around and still feel good about themselves because they don't have to actually sacrifice anything themselves to get the feeling of moral superiority. I think that white people are so guilty uh, knowing what they've done to black people uh, that they feel if the uh, deeds were reversed, they would, re they would hate the black man if he had done the same thing to them. So it's actually, uh, it actually reflects a guilt complex on the part of whites when they ask us, do we 
hate them. Uh, and if you notice, Uncle Sam has formed a habit of going all over the world. Uh, he calls it the ugly American or the American image. He thinks that everybody hates him because of the guilt complex. Can you explain why Identity Retreat is a really unique opportunity for students to be in a cohort-based model um, and have a really, really intentional conversation around race and white privilege and what that means? First understanding what is whiteness, what is white identity, into, you know, what then happens? What, are the, what is the privilege that is um, given to us because of that whiteness? And then where are the, where's the oppression happening because of that? And what are the things that we are involved in that we don't even realize are due to the fact that we're white? And then finally helping people um, get some skills to actually address this and recognize it sooner in themselves. All one is required to do is affirm the egalitarian principle, support activists, and join the public outcry when those less fortunate get into trouble and attack those who object and advocate for the disadvantage in every scenario, because those who are committing crimes are only doing so as a result of the unjust institutions of the past. Liberals find it difficult and often impossible to condemn acts from a disadvantaged group that it would crucify others that did the same but were more advantaged. The, the less white babies on this planet, on the less hand. of you we got, boo. The blood is on I your hope they hand. kill all the white babies kill them all right now yeah. kill them kill your grandkids kagali posted what could be interpreted as a hate message of her own on social media news talk 1010 found this tweet please allah give me strength not to cuss kill these men and white folks out here today please please but the feeling of guilt and commitment to egalitarian principles blocks this feeling and does not deem it worthy of consideration so when clashes happen between career criminals and police the police who strive to keep public order and protect the freedoms of the people are turned into monstrosities and this liberal guilt is determined not by the facts or the evidence but by the feeling of moral superiority which liberalism anoints to those less privileged However, this feeling of guilt is irrational. It is even irrational from the point of view from its own liberal ideology. In the scrolls of the liberal ideology, it enforces the belief that poverty and oppression results from ignorance and faulty institutions from the past, neither of which are any of my doing. Despite the institution of slavery in America or the colonial rule that whites held in Europe, none of that had anything to do with me or my children. According to liberalism, everyone, not just the poor or oppressed, would have to be victims of these faulty institutions and therefore should be blameless according to the liberal rule. A child born into an upper class family is no more innocent or guilty than a child born into a family of poverty. When a disadvantaged criminal commits a crime, it follows as an immediate consequence that there is no reason to blame a criminal for his crimes, as they are not liable for being ignorant. If they had only had the right education and had been shown the way, but were prevented from that education by an unjust society that they were born into. So they are not to blame at all. Society is. But there is a problem with this line of thought. The liberal thought process is not consistent. If ignorance is responsible for the bad social conditions that have happened in the past, such as racial injustices, crime, and wars, and thus relieves them of responsibility for their crimes or behaviors, then also is the upper class advantaged citizen who is the one getting robbed because he is also a byproduct of the system and therefore should be relieved of any feelings of personal guilt because they were born into the same unfit institutions that liberals have criticized as responsible for the wrongdoing. Even so, liberalism cannot or will not even this balance out, but puts blame on the advantaged who also should be relieved of responsibility and the wealthy to which the liberal blames for the faulty institutions should be free from blame just as the criminal. Still, the liberal guilt suggests that the less privileged demands my help to make things right, and so liberals shall demand for inequality in favor of the less privileged, despite the privileged having nothing to do with the institutions that are at fault, as they are a product of the same faulty institutions. Even if whites had these moral obligations to sacrifice themselves in favor of the underprivileged or for certain minority groups that have been oppressed, that belief cannot be derived from liberalism or any of liberal principles. As James Burnham writes, even if American and European whites had such moral obligations, it cannot be derived from liberal principles. Liberal theory is atomistic and quantitative and in particular rejects organic conceptions of society, which liberalism blames to be correlated with reactionary and fascist types of social regimes. The idea that I, today, am organically part of a white race that was doing something to American or blacks or Hindus, etc., is total nonsense from the point of view of liberalism's philosophical conceptions. In fact, the very concept of race of human beings is so difficult to reconcile with liberal doctrine that many liberal anthropologists and philosophers rule it out of anthropology. 
If race doesn't even exist, it is hard to see how it can be guilty. However, theoretical paradoxes, inconsistencies, or confusions are of little importance to the liberal. Guilt is integral to liberalism, and the feeling of guilt is an integral element in the liberal motivation. Christianity conversely faces the guilt issue and provides an explanation for it, and even offering a medication to handle the side effects. To Christianity, every man is guilty merely by being a man, because the entire human race has committed a supreme crime, and one man sacrificed himself so that mankind would be redeemed from their infinite guilt, and having been carried out, men may be released from this guilt by believing in him, his resurrection, and doing his will and being baptized in his name. Christianity thus solves the guilt problem free from government. However, liberalism and its typical rejection of superstitious customs rejects the religious aspect of this guilt and does not offer the same alleviation of personal guilt or sin. Liberalism is secularist and opposes the theological state and teachings of religion. Liberalism offers no sufficient explanation to or answer on how to fix the feeling of guilt. The best it can offer is education and reform of the customs that have been brought from the past. But even this method often magnifies the guilt by pushing it on those who may identify as Christian and have not been previously indoctrinated with such feelings. But liberalism offers no end, no final solution whatsoever. There is no point at which the liberal can be at peace. You cannot rest and be at peace while sworn into a belief system that expresses continuous change and never-ending reform. Since this constant change and reform has never yet gotten rid of the social ills people face, it always has more work to do. And although many of the things they've done have only made things worse for many, who had nothing to do with the problem at hand, they keep from being discouraged by focusing on method rather than results, intentions rather than levels of success, on doing something, even if that something only irritates the scab they're trying to heal. Again, an ideology committed to never-ending change until things are perfect will never at any point be at peace. This fact pushes out farther and farther the good results that will finally arrive, and not only protects liberalism from extinction, but provides an always ready reason for why it hasn't worked just yet. And like a Ponzi scheme operator promises that it will work, it's coming soon, someday, just wait, much like the promises of socialism and communism that the payoff is just around the corner, but never actually arrives. Interestingly enough, there are many within the Christian faith, most commonly Catholics, that are part of this liberal movement, but the Catholic crowd is a recent recruit, as Catholicism has none of liberalism's lineage. Because of this, there is some discomfort among the Catholics and among others accepting Catholics into the group. There are cases where individuals are committed to a certain stance through his religion, and liberalism is somewhat inconsistent and incompatible with that view, but that is not worrisome to either the liberal Christian or to the liberal crowd. Inconsistency just comes with the territory of liberalism. People do things that aren't logical or rational, that's just how humans are, although liberalism itself does not support that statement. Many times emotion takes precedent, and many cannot resist the moral satisfaction that fighting for those less advantage offers. They, they, they really are for helping, uh, they're for helping people who are disadvantaged, as they put it. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas I think conserv conservatives want, want to stop people from being disadvantaged. You know, they, you know, the, the liberals want to help the poor while they're poor, but really the biggest benefit is to stop them from being poor.